Writing in English in a professional real estate environment can be challenging. In this video, I'll talk about eight common grammar mistakes that English learners make in written communication and how to avoid them. If you're ready to take your real estate English to the next level, stay tuned. Welcome back to Real Estate English Academy, the place for English learners to boost their real estate English. I'm Jenny, and I'm excited about today's lesson. In today's business world, we are constantly writing and texting back and forth with clients and colleagues. Whether it's in a formal context, like requesting a quote or scheduling a meeting, or in a more informal setting, like wishing a colleague happy birthday, or letting them know that you're running late. There's no way around it. Getting your grammar right in written communication is important. Do that and your English speaking colleagues and clients will take you more seriously and consider you more professional. I've put together eight common grammar mistakes that you should avoid in written communication at all cost. Let's go. Mistake number one, getting the salutation wrong. Let's have a look at the following salutations. Dear Miss Johnson, dear Mrs. Johnson, dear Ms. Johnson, dear Ms. Johnson. What's the correct way of addressing Ms. Johnson? Well, to start with, Miss is not used in business correspondence. Mrs. or the abbreviated version of Mrs. is only used for married women, but you might not know whether the person you're writing to is married. So, the best way to address women in a professional context is to use the neutral form Ms. The question now is, do we need the period? In the US, we typically put in a period, but in the UK, it's common to leave the period out. With men, it's more straightforward. You'd use Mr. Johnson in the US and Mr. Johnson without the period in the UK. Mistake number two, putting the currency symbol in the wrong spot. Let's take a look at the following figures, $250 and $250. Which one is correct? Where does the currency symbol go in English? The currency symbol always goes before the number. So the correct way to write this number would be $250. Mistake number three, mixing up commas and decimals in numbers. Which one is correct? The monthly rent is $2,578 or the monthly rent is $2,578. In English, a comma is used to mark thousands and a decimal point or dot is used to show decimals. So the first number is correct. Mistake number four, getting capitalization wrong. Could you please send me the French version of this document? Do you see the mistake? That's right, French needs to be capitalized. In English, we capitalize countries regardless of whether the word is a noun, as in next year, I'm going to spend my summer vacation in France, or an adjective, as in, the French language is a beautiful one. Other words that are capitalized in English include the days of the week, months, and holidays. We also capitalize cities and city districts like The Hague or West End. However, it's important to remember that currencies like the US dollar, the British pound, and the euro are not capitalized. Mistake number five, getting the time wrong. Which is correct? Our afternoon meeting is scheduled for 3 a.m., 3 p.m., or 15 p.m. The correct answer is 3 p.m. The 24-hour clock is rarely used in English, except maybe by the military or in travel documents. A.m. comes from Latin and stands for ante meridium and refers to the period between 12 o'clock at night and 12 o'clock at noon. PM stands for 
post meridian and refers to the period between 12 o'clock at noon and 12 o'clock at night. Got it? Okay, let's move on. Mistake number six, using the definite article wrong. Let's meet at 3 p.m. on the 5th Avenue. Can you find the mistake in this sentence? Well, first of all, in English, we typically do not use the definite article with street names. So you would just say on 5th Avenue. Now, what about the word order? Is it correct? In English, we use the rule manner, place, time, which means we refer to the thing we do, which is meet in this uh, case, and then we define where it happens on 5th Avenue. And finally, we indicate when it happens at 3 p.m. So the correct sentence would be, let's meet on 5th Avenue at 3 p.m. Okay, what about this sentence? The vacancy in San Francisco has gone up due to a decrease in the take up. Do we need to use definite articles here? No. Vacancy and take up are uncountable nouns, which means they are not used with definite articles. So the correct sentence would be, vacancy in San Francisco has gone up due to a decrease in take up. Mistake number seven. Closing remarks. A typical way English learners tend to end their emails is, I'm looking forward to see you in Tokyo next week. Is this sentence correct? Not quite. The correct way of closing an email would be, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Tokyo next week. Again, I'm looking forward to seeing you, not I'm looking forward to see you. That brings us to mistake number eight. Complimentary closing. What's the best way to close an email? Many English learners struggle to find an elegant way of signing off. Here are a few examples that you can always rely on. Formal endings, regards, kind regards, best regards, sincerely. Informal endings, all the best, speak to you soon, talk to you soon, have a great weekend, and take care. Okay, I hope this video has helped you improve your written English. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Also, take our free quiz and find out how good your English real estate language skills are. Take care and see you next time.